because I believe science might offer an answer to the curse of the Bambino. Why someone took so long to hire that guy is beyond me. Anybody who's not tearing their team down right now and rebuilding it using your model, they're dinosaurs. One of the great things about money is it, it buys a lot of things. One of which is the luxury to disregard what baseball likes, doesn't like, what baseball thinks, doesn't think. <laughs> This is threatening, not just a way of doing business, but, it's, but in their minds, it's threatening the game. How can you not be romantic about baseball? All right, welcome to another Baseball Ops podcast. This probably is going to go down one of my favorites overall or of all time so far because just the topic is really, really interesting. We're talking DNA. We're talking a new word to epigenetics. Um, we're talking baseball performance enhancement. We're going into why you need uh, a DNA analysis. It's no better way to start to customize your training or to help you achieve your athletic goals or your goals in baseball. It's going to be ultimately the future of medicine if things evolve well or it's going to be um, always an edge in athletics. So it's something where... Uh, everyone needs to hear this. This is cu really cutting edge. It's before, way before it's time. You will definitely get uh, an advantage from this, mainly because there's a service applied to it with Dr. J, who we're interviewing. He's um, many things. Let's go right into his book that we'll talk about. But he um, he's a bio, uh, he's got a PhD in biochemistry from the Boston University School of Medicine and a BA with a double major in biology and theology from. Ave Maria University, Florida. He's written, I think, a few books. We talk about one in particular, and he's led the industry in a lot of DNA, uh, virus, uh, epi epigenetic, uh, testosterone, estrogen research. Um, I think you're going to really be excited to listen to the podcast and, and really walk away with it with an edge on on how all this works. So, since this runs long, I want to get right into it. So here we go. All right, Brent Portia, topvelocity.net. This is going to be an exciting episode of the Baseball Ops podcast. We've got Dr. Anthony J. As he just told me, he goes, it's Dr. J, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for being on the show, man. Why Dr. J? Were you a yeah, big fan? Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, I mean, it was pr probably before me, before my time, but... You know, my dad's Dr. J, too. He's actually a medical doctor, more conventional than I am. But, uh, but you know, everybody thought that was hilarious when I was growing up, and I think it's pretty fun, too. That is awesome. <laughs> Dr. J is a legend. <clears throat> <laughs> also, doctor in the medical field, a legend in the medical field. <laughs> so no, no, no. let's talk about DNA, man. This is going to be a really cool podcast. Um, I was lucky enough you uh, – took me through my DNA and you exposed me and you said that, that video will be out. They'll know everything about me. Um, yep. I don't care. I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, talk about uh, what, what DNA is and, and why it's important to those listening and then we'll go into your background. Cool. Yeah. Um, so DNA, you know, a lot of times people try and simplify it and just say it's a blueprint, which it, it sort of is, you know, and so it's inside the cell every single cell in your body has the same DNA, which is crazy because, you know, you think about how different your heart is from your lung, from your liver and all that sort of thing. But, you know, it's still, it's all the same. If you took a piece of liver tissue, the DNA is going to be the same. If you spit in a cup, you know, the DNA is the same from your skin cells on the inside of your mouth. So they're able, these companies are able to sequence DNA from literally any particular tissue from your body and it's the same DNA which is useful and so these the best companies out there well maybe not the best but the easiest way the, the easiest and the cheapest companies are basically spitting in a you know you spit in a tube and they sequence your DNA so what does that mean well it's code you know there's like four billion base pairs of DNA of in, in one single cell you've got a copy of DNA from your mother and a copy from your father and you know Scientists read that as a code. So there's four letters. There's A, T, G, C. And those stand for chemical names. It's complicated. It's not that important. But the point is, there's four billion base pairs of DNA inside every single cell. And it's all the same. So, you know, that's important because 
every time your cell wants to make a protein or make an enzyme or you know make something that causes an you know that acts inside the cell it it always derives from dna so the reason you know we did your dna analysis and it's so powerful is because if you've got a messed up gene if you've got DNA, a region of dna that has a problem even if it's a slight problem um it it changes the protein which changes the function which you know causes problems so, so basically I, people that are out there and, and this is coming to the athlete that are more slow twitch they yep. uh they don't um build strength easily um they can't gain weight that's all going to be right. in their dna right yeah correct and a good example of how powerful dna is um you know, what we look at usually are called single nucleotide polymorphisms. And what that scientists just call those SNPs, SNPs, and they just pronounce it as SNPs. And a good example of how powerful that is, is, you know, you've heard of sickle cell anemia, correct? Mm -hmm. It's when your red blood cells look like little sickles, like half moon shape. And obviously they're not carrying oxygen. If you literally have one point mutation, one single letter of your DNA code is different. On it within a certain region of DNA called the gene, if one letter is changed, you can get sickle cell anemia. Wow, that's how that's how but subtle these changes are. But it's amazing that all because I'm a coder from you know young. I, I learned to code on the computer, and it's almost the same thing with code. If you miss a comma, <laughs> there's yep. Yep, the thing exactly. explodes. <laughs> yeah, it messes up the whole yeah the whole subsequent sequence or the yeah. the, the enzyme in this case. Yeah, so. It's, did did someone uh, code us? Is, I mean, what's going on here with this DNA? <laughs> well, I mean, the problem is if you've got too big of an alter, an alteration, you just get death, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. We and and the crazy thing about humans compared to other animals is that we get just more miscarriages than any other species. And I mean, there's a lot of complexity there in terms of the cause of that. Probably a lot of man-made chemicals, a lot of epigenetics. And epigenetics, by the way, they're marks on top of the DNA. So that's another big component of the picture. So as an athlete, you definitely want to be looking at your DNA and trying to figure out where are my strengths, where are my weaknesses. Like you said, fast twitch muscle, slow twitch muscle. You know, I mean, a million different things. As as you have kind of, you know, as, you, as you've seen within your personal DNA, you start to see dietary changes, macros, you know, should I eat more protein, fat, carbs, how should, what should those ratios be? I mean, so many variables. And the coolest thing was, you know, just, I'm 41, so I, I know my family history pretty well, and it was just amazing how the DNA was really reflective of my family history. Like, you know, yep. my grandfather and grandmother died of cancer, and you had you told me there were some markers for me not being on process, process uh, carcinogens and, and my colon yep. uh, issues. And that was linked to the same cancer my grandparents had. And then, um, you know, even the, some of the heart stuff, which I don't think was that much of an issue, it was on my mom's side. But it was just, it was specifically with my, my dad's parents. It was just really interesting to see that the markers were there that more than likely I got from them, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you definitely either got your genes from your mother or your father and I mean obviously both but right but it comes yeah, down I the mean, line I mean it comes from our ancestors right oh yeah yeah and there's you know there's yeah I mean the problem with 23 and me you know these companies is they play it really safe and they honestly don't tell you all the information because they're worried about the FDA they're worried about getting in trouble Well, I remember when they first came out they got shut down by the FDA yeah, that was a funny story. They basically gave, they basically stuck their middle finger up at the FDA, the CEO. Well, they're Google, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're the, the wife of the Google co-founder, CJ yeah, Abraham, is the founder. Yeah, and and yeah, she she basically was saying that the FDA, we're we're above the FDA. They can't shut us down. And yeah, right. the FDA said, "Oh yeah, why, well, let's, let me show you." And they wrote this crazy letter. The FDA wrote this crazy letter. Um, just so political and then and then they shut them down and and so then it slowly came back online 23 and me slowly came back online and were they were able to sequence dna only and provide no report and that's when i really started the actual dna consulting that i do because i already had that expertise no that was smart that's a good move 
Yeah, and, and even today, people do my DNA analysis with me. They do consulting sessions. And then they also pay for the extra 23andMe information, which is like $100. And honestly, they don't learn anything from 23andMe that I didn't already tell them. And the stuff from 23andMe is just so neutered, you know, it doesn't really tell right. you. No, that makes sense. And I think that's why you're a great service to be able to take that DNA and, you know, tell them, basically consult or sit down with the person and tell them what, what's going on with their DNA and, and how to benefit from it, and, and that, which is awesome. Um, and in, uh, last I checked, the 23andMe was <clears throat> for the Ancestry pack was like 69 bucks. So isn't that how it starts with you? You get the Ancestry pack. The cheapest one, right? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I got cut off because I realized I was still on the Mayo Clinic server. Okay, <laughs> no, <laughs> I was I was doing a remote server this morning. All right, well, good. Um, now you're back on. What, so I was saying basically I missed what you said. Yeah, yeah. Go go to Twenty Three and Me, and they get the the cheapest kit, and from there they can get their raw DNA data, and they exactly. send that to you, and then you'll you can do consult consultation with them on, about their DNA. Yep. And, uh, and like I said, I'd tell people everything, not just the safe things or, you know, the, the things that are really obvious or superficial, like, oh, you have blue eyes. Well, who cares? <laughs> yeah. I try and make it make it practical and accurate. So uh, how does that work with you when you start your your basically uh, your analysis of it? Yep. Uh, do you have like a little system that's proprietary to you or is it just yep. basically a general yep. way you go at it? Yeah, no, I, I do have a proprietary system that I use and it's software and I actually have three different programs and I even do this in labs. So like, for example, right now I'm researching stem cells at the Mayo Clinic and uh, we're doing what's called next generation sequencing. So we get, we look at every gene and that's about 25,000 genes in a stem cell in every cell. I mean, this is all people, right? We all have about 25,000 genes in every cell. And a gene, by the way, is just a part of your DNA. It's not, you know, you've got this massive, um, you know, DNA code, but then within certain regions, there's different genes. And what those genes, what they do is they encode for a protein. And I, I know I, I keep feeling like I'm getting too technical. <laughs> yeah, well, I know I, I'm staying with you, but yeah, it, I mean, it is pretty tough. But I mean, come on, you're, you're dealing with something very complex, right? <laughs> yeah, that's always the difficulty. Right. But, um, but yeah, what we're doing with these stem cell populations is I'm, I'm doing manipulations, like I'm shining infrared light on them and, and things and trying to reprogram the cells to make them healthier and, and just characterize them better so that we're injecting them back into joints, you know, in athletes and things. There's a better response. There's a more consistent outcome. Okay, you know, so that's cool. So you're basically with stem cells, which is basically um, a way of injecting cells into the body to where the body's in need of rebuilding or growth and it will you yep. actually use those cells so you're saying uh, we need to make sure we put in the right cells is what you're saying yeah exactly and I take these cells from humans from their fat tissue they're called adipose derived mesenchymal stem cells and uh, you know a lot of guys are literally doing this as a preventative therapy now not only they're not waiting until they tear their rotator cuff or whatever or their UCL or their ACL, they're actually injecting the, the cells in advance, especially the UFC guys, because those guys are just so hard on their joints. And they're, wow. they're experiencing awesome outcomes, yeah. Well, how does this fall into the rules and regulation of NCAA and, you say, Major yeah. League Baseball? <laughs> well, that's a good point. I, didn't, I thought you were going to say, you know, how, how is the FDA regulating it? And their <laughs> FDA is cracking down so tight on this, too. Oh, a lot of people are. have to go to Panama or something. Yeah, But... Yeah, in terms of like, it's almost like a performance enhancing drug, right? Because you can actually strengthen your rotator cuff beyond what you might naturally be able to do. And it's not bionic. It's not like you're making a fake rotator cuff out of titanium or something. <laughs> wow. Is, is, is it, have you heard much Major League Baseball players doing this? Yeah, a bunch of them. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's only going to be a bigger and, and it's going to, a bigger deal. It's going to expand more, especially as the United States changes the laws. I mean, that's the real problem right now. People feel like, you know, they, they, they feel like they have to sneak out to some other country to do it. And that's kind of sketchy. And I mean, there's no question. There's definitely some sketchy research in other countries yeah. and, and you can manipulate genes too. And that's another big frontier. I think that's kind of a concern because, you know, I can do that right now. And I was doing that back when I 
so I graduated college and then I went to a lab in Boston and then became a lab tech. And then I started this consulting company that I still have today. Um, it morphed from, uh, more from a lab tech into a consulting company because, uh, I started designing viruses. Yeah. And what that means, it sounds kind of like bioterrorism. And I was working for the, I was working for the government through, through the Veterans Administration. Wow. But, and it could be bioterrorism, but it wasn't yeah. for me. I was designing viruses to try and use them in therapies. I mean, especially in, in Alzheimer's. And that's where you, I mean, that's where the D, those kind of come together because you can actually use the viruses to implant DNA, correct? Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's even crazier because what I did, like when I say design virus, I was literally making DNA. So you design the DNA, put it in a human cell in a dish, and then the cell actually makes the virus for me. And then you literally just use this big centrifuge machine and spin it down. And so you collect the virus in this little tiny pellet. And then you can inject it into mice and test it. Like we were literally drilling into mice brains and injecting them in their brains and actually seeing a lot of positive benefits because we were looking, we were trying to do positive things. Not Have you done it to yourself <laughs> yet? No, hell no. <laughs> no, but you could. And, and Well, there, in isn't Boston, there some guy that just went out public and injected himself with a virus that's supposed to t change his DNA? Oh, for sure. And I mean, people are probably doing this on the sly. Not publicly, right? On their YouTube yeah. channel. <laughs> oh, man. It's, yeah. Well, so back when, you know, you've heard of these immunosuppressed children or immunosuppressed people that have, you know, cancers or, or just don't even have an immune system effectively and they have to live in these bubbles. So that's a minor DNA change. And way back when, about the time I was starting my consulting company, actually, um, they used viruses in those children to change their DNA. And and actually cured them. They cured wow. all those. They cured like ten. They walked children. They out it. of the bubble. Yep. Yep. No and way. They did it. it was like ten children, if I remember right. What? And that doesn't. Yeah, sound. because they couldn't interact with people. They had real low quality of life, and yeah. and then boom, yeah, they totally instantly changed them. But here's the catch: all of those children within a couple of years they got cancer, and wow. everybody could, flipped out over that. And was that it because of the virus? Them. The viruses caused the cancer. Yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. So the viruses still had cancer-causing genes. Ah. But so I've the heard the Chinese, am I wrong? I heard the Chinese have developed, maybe I'm wrong, but I heard someone developed a, a virus that's completely c clean of any of that. Yep, for sure. Okay. And in fact, and, and they use it actually in stem cells because you can, you can change your adult cells back into stem cells using just like four or five genes. It's not that difficult. And that's where they usually use that technology is they, they do it in a dish. So they'll take some skin cells, which aren't even stem cells, right? And they'll put them in a dish and then put virus on them that will transform them back into stem cells. Wow. Yep. And then those stem cells can transform into joint cells or right, heart cells if you've got a heart issue or lung cells or whatever. They can transform into anything. And that's a, sim that's a simple genetic manipulation with virus. And yeah, they totally take out – now they take out all those cancer-causing genes. They use this cool technology where they, they cut it out almost like a scissor. Wow. So they're still there initially, but then they cut those genes out. Man, we could literally talk about this forever because there's so many things you could do. You think this would ever go yeah. into the new UCL augmentation approaches that are basically trying to reheal or re-stabilize um, the UCL? Would, would they be able yep. to use it for that? For sure, yeah. I mean, that's going to be 100% in my opinion. I mean, cool. yeah, it's opinion, but... But yeah, I mean, what about let's go to concussions for football? Would they ever be able to have stem cells that would help regrow the dead areas of the brain? Or is, if it's dead, yeah. it's dead. No, no. Brains are more neoplastic than people realized. You know, people always thought those neurons never grow back. But there's really good evidence they do now. Um, that is almost a myth. This idea that you have a certain number of neurons and once you kill those, that's it. <laughs> so we could eventually be able to help guys like Junior Seau, who supposedly killed himself because of his brain was so basically yep. decayed or dead from the, the yep. beatings. Well, what happens with those? I used to. St that's exactly what I was researching. I was I was in a lab next door to somebody named Anna McKee, and Anne McKee is she was in the New York Times all the time, and and. You know, I was on the TV with Sanjay Gupta and all this wow. stuff back when I was working with her. I was collaborating and I was part of those some of those interviews on CNN or whatever wow. they were doing. And she is the one that, you know, these famous boxers and football players and all this. They would donate their brains after their families would donate their brains. And 
and I would get to research those. And what happens is you get plaques, just like Alzheimer's. You get these plaques called tau plaques. So when you have Alzheimer's, you get amyloid, beta, and tau. And when you have these concuss these concussion syndromes, you you see the similar like a similar kind of fingerprint as Alzheimer's, wow. and it causes a lot of depression. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like what you would do with stem cells to mitigate that is you would inject them into people's spinal fluid. And that's a way to kind of access your brain because if you inject it in the blood, it's not going to go through the blood brain barrier for the most part. I mean, you might be able to design something that could squeeze through that blood brain barrier, but ideally you, you would just go, go right go. into the brain. Yeah. Well, you can too. You can, you can do that through the and skull. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the problem is if you get some kind of an infection or, yeah. if, or if the brain perceives those cells as infectious, it causes the swelling and then your brain doesn't have anywhere to go because your yeah, skull is crazy well if but if you're someone like junior Seau who's in desperate need of that you know yeah well that's that's so amazing man i mean it just shows where, where we're evolving in the next decade it's probably gonna be insane right yeah and that's that's what i was gonna say like have you heard of myostatin yes what is that like I, these, I've heard they the discovered it in belgium with this ridiculous cow like there was a oh, yeah, yeah 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 that basically changed their <laughs> dna to where their their muscle I mean, and there's there's like a small percentage of the population that actually naturally have the DNA, and it just basically their muscle yeah. definition is is what is it? It just always enhancing? Is that what it is? Yeah, myostatin's like an inhibitor to shut off muscle growth. Okay. After after it hits a certain, it's kind of like eating, you know, like you have certain inhibitors that make you say, "Oh, I'm full. I'm, I should stop eating." Well, that's pure performance enhancement. I mean, come on, is that better yeah, than yeah. testosterone? I mean, because ultimately you're changing, yeah. you're mutating yourself. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, and you can't detect that, or you can't, you know, you could use a virus to inject myostatin into somebody. Well, what's going to happen is they're going to take DNA when they're born, and they're going to look at their DNA when they're playing. They're be like, your DNA is different. <laughs> What happened? Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you can always argue that that was some kind of a natural. Yeah, I got a virus when I was a kid, and I'm jacked now. <laughs> well, they can't even prove it was a virus if you remove all those viral genes. Jeez. So you would, what you would do, and I'm, I'm definitely concerned about this, and I think it's going to happen, and you know, because you can do it in animals easy, is you can, you can inject it. A def, you know, like a deformed myostatin gene. So then the myostatin, this inhibitor doesn't even work. So then your muscles just grow out of control like they do in these cows. And these cows, I mean, you've seen them. Yeah. They're massive. They're it's ridiculous. Yeah. And they don't even exercise. They don't do anything. They just effect, sit on the field. Does that affect their hearts too? Is their hearts ever growing? Yeah, it's a good question. I haven't looked into that. That's a great question because obviously testosterone can have that effect if you're yeah. overdosing it like these bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Arnold. Arnold's had a few open heart surgeries. Yeah, and and I mean the trick with tricky thing with testosterone is it it actually can convert back to cholesterol. So testosterone comes from cholesterol, but it can go the other way too. If you have so much testosterone, I mean like crazy, like a hundredfold higher than a normal person, and you have a ton of but, cholesterol. Yeah, it'll convert it back to cholesterol, and that can just clog your arteries almost like a gene mutation can. Yeah, yeah, man. Gosh, it's just so much here, man. You're you're doing such interesting work. Well, let's like focus back into because that was the fun part, I guess. Let's focus yeah, yeah. back into how can knowing your DNA truly help you as an athlete? Give them some of the benefits that uh, comes with learning their DNA. Yeah, and when we were doing your DNA, if I remember, you're a fast twitch guy, you're a power guy. Um, maybe a high intensity interval training guy. Yeah, I think you said I had a lot of not, good amount of nitric oxide in my. Yep, body. yep. You had, okay. a, you had a positive nitric oxide gene. I think it was nitric oxide three or cool. nitric oxide synthase three. Yeah, and and you can tell all of those things, but you know, you asked a question, and I actually been thinking about this a couple days because cool. it was a great question. Is this idea that if you're an endurance guy, but you're you've always been a pitcher and you're gifted at pitching, but you're still you're genetically an endurance guy. How do you optimize your pitching or should you try and shift into something more conducive to endurance? And, you know, I was thinking about it and, you know, Justin Verlander, I've never done his DNA, but I'll bet you he's an endurance guy and he's a perfect example of what you can do as somebody who is probably genetically endurance, you know, um, so when optimized. you say endurance, are we, are you talking aerobic? Like, <clears throat> yep, yep. Basically they're more prone to burn aerobic ATP. Or they're yeah, built to exactly. do that better. Okay. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> so when you have these genes that are, excuse me, <clears throat> when you have genes that are uh, optimal for power, like power lifters and things, mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, most of the time when you burn sugar like glucose, it just stays outside of the mitochondria and gets converted to lactic acid and pyruvate. Um, and you know, for a guy who's more of an endurance guy, that pyruvate gets brought into the mitochondria and converted to ATP using oxygen. So that's a slower process, but it's a lot more efficient. You get a lot more ATP at the end of the day. And so the point is, you know, like these power guys, they're burning a lot quicker fuel, but it's not as efficient. So, you know, I mean, there's pros and cons. I think in terms of your health and your lifespan, usually you want to utilize your mitochondria. Well, I think, but that, you know, the, it's typically the muscle fiber is, Composition. is, is yeah. built for the, the energy. So I guess, are, are, is it safe to say that if we have, if we're, our body wants to burn more pyruvate for yep. energy, that it's probably more, has a more slow twitch composition? Um, the other way, yeah. the other way around. Yeah. Or I mean, well, speed. if the pyruvate is, if the pyruvate is shuttled into the mitochondria, yeah, you usually would have a slow twitch muscle fiber. Right. Correct. So, yep. so if we go and change that muscle fiber, well, there's no, that's called hyperplasma, isn't it? When you go from slow twitch to fast, but I don't think there's yep. much evidence that that happens in sports. Um, I think swimmers shoulders, they found there might be evidence that it, it did happen, but it's usually not common. But for, for yep. some reason, if you were able to remodel slow twitch to fast twitch would that atp system want to change i think so yeah because it adapts it, you know you can change it rapidly well, but the thing is the thing ahead. is is these enzymes that these enzymes that produce you know the atp and all the enzyme the all the uh processes involved in atp those like i say those can be optimal for one way or they can be suboptimal in certain ways so you can't really change that, you know, if you've got genetics. And but I think what you can do is like, what would I tell guys? So say Verlander's, like you said, he's, um, I mean, say he's an endurance guy, but obviously he's also a power guy, a guy who can throw 100 miles an hour. So he probably oh. just has a blend of, of uh, fast switch. Well, to slow well switch. You, but, but the thing about a Verlander, and the reason he's a good example, is because he takes a lot longer to warm into that 100 mile an hour pitch. And I think that's what you have to, you have to give yourself, you know, a little bit more leeway and say, okay, I'm a slow twitch guy. I'm an endurance guy genetically, and I'm just not going to be able to change. I'm not going to hundred percent be able to change that into fast twitch. So I have to do more warm ups, you know, and, and, and just, you know, pitch, pitch full games or, or at least, you know, start warming up a lot longer than everybody else, whatever. You know what I mean? You can optimize well, that. Well, to, the guys that I've had come in here that were like sloths, right? I had this one yep. guy who was like six eight. He was like wow. two fifty, and I swear he was related to a sloth. I mean, just everything he did was slow. I mean, he had a really slow, deep voice, and he came in at like seventy two. And I got him to like the best I ever got him to was like eighty eight, because wow. what I'm doing with the loading. In, in uh, with the Olympic lifting, with the loading, is I'm hypertrophying what fast switch muscle fiber he has. So I, I, I tell him this way: it's like what we're gonna do is we're not gonna obviously we're not remodeling here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take what fast switch you have and we're gonna hypertrophy it as much as we can. And I yep. think what happens is you still have a kid who's built to go in and throw nine innings if he wanted to, but mm -hmm. we're, but the problem is he's probably gonna throw those nine innings at eighty. He wants to throw you know, maybe six at 90, because that'll get him a job. So <clears throat> what I do is I just, I, I don't, you know, to me, the strength, what he's good at is the, <clears throat> the slow twitch endurance. I'll harbor that. I'll keep that going, obviously, because that'll get him into the sixth inning. But I really, really have to force him every day to make an emphasis to hypertrophy that fast twitch, because that's the only way he's ever going to be a 90 mile an hour guy, you know. You think yeah. that's a good approach? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I agree 100%. And, and you can do some dietary changes too to kind of, you know, promote that also. I mean, I, I think you sh you probably would agree with that and yeah. you probably already do that. And and that's the ultimate is when you've got, you know, everything working in that direction in the same direction, which is speed. But well, it could be hard. I mean, most of the guys that come in to your pitching camps probably are naturally fast twitch already. No, no. I I I actually get scrubs so i get guys that really? really really shouldn't be pitchers but i'm not going to tell them or they shouldn't think they're going to be 90 mile an hour guys but nope. I, I know i can get them there it's just they don't understand that 
when they see this other kid getting there a lot easier, that that's not them. I have to go, look, your DNA isn't built like that guy. You yeah. have a lot less going for you when it comes to being anaerobic. So I'm going to have to overemphasize all this loading to force an adaption that doesn't really come easy to your body. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> And, you know, you can use electrical stimulation to, to enhance that as well. And some people have different genes that are involved in that process. You know, the process of nerve formation and nerve firing. Because I'm a big fan. I have a, I have a power lifter buddy here in Minnesota. He was, I think he was the Minnesota Strongman winner a few years ago. I just did some deadlifting videos with this guy. <laughs> cool. And he, like, like instructional videos for people for my YouTube channel. And he was Sweet. doing 500 pounds for like 10 reps. Like it was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> for instructional that's, that's purposes. That's crazy. But, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we, were, we were talking about all this stuff. And he, his company, his business is electrical stimulation. And I've done this with him. And I've done it with baseball pitchers actually here at Minnesota also. Um, alongside with me and you know I'm so dysfunctional because I'm sitting in labs I'm sitting at my desk I'm writing books I'm doing all this stuff I mean just you know I fight it I deadlift you know and do certain things to try and fight that posture dysfunction and you know the physiological dysfunction from do too much sedentary stuff but you know you should have seen me compared to a baseball pitcher literally I had a, a pitcher he, he wasn't a professional but he's probably going to be a professional soon and we were both hooked up to the same electricity machine and we were doing squats, you know, like we had the quads hooked up and the hamstrings and we're, what you do is you hook up to these machines and then you, you do the proper form for like a squat or for a deadlift or whatever the movement pattern is. And it reprograms your nervous system into the proper movement pattern a lot faster than you could do it, which I really appreciate because, you know, I'm all about saving time and yeah. And it fires your muscles, you know, well, about a hundred times faster than you can do it. Have you, is it the ARP wave? Have you ever heard of the ARP wave? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. He's got his own, you know, patented technology because it works in both directions. It actually detects the signal and it sends out the signal. Well, what's so you this, can, I want to check him out after we get off the show. I want to check, the, check him out because we, we, yeah. we do the ARP wave. Chris Medlin got us into the ARP wave and it's amazing. They, they actually put it on when they sleep. They have yep. a recovery mode when they sleep. That, that's exactly. very yep. subtle. Yeah, and it just went off patent so that you you know you can actually buy the thing for yourself pretty cheap compared to what it used to be. I mean, it used to be like 15 grand. Yeah, the Arcwave? Now yeah, it's... they're like $20,000. So what do you mean it went off patent? So he was just telling me that, you know, obviously there's these utility patents and they last like 15 or 20 years depending on the patent. And it apparently just went off patent so you can get them now. No way. All right. Thank you. So now, now, cheap, this... now they can make them cheap. You Thank know, in God. China. These things, yeah. I've been wanting to get one in here, but it's like $20,000 and you're leasing it. You don't even actually own it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, I'll hook you up with my buddy because uh, okay, please. He's, he's got connections on how to get these. and Yeah, they're huge. And a lot of the Olympic lifters are using them. I follow the Olympic lifters because to me that's the best athlete that really is in the business of performance enhancement. I mean, that's what that whole sport is built around. Yep. And of course, I mean, in any sport, you're going to have guys doing it legally. But, you know, I get around guys that are clean that do it right. And just how they load and how they periodize and program is, is probably as good as it gets when it comes to naturally uh, enhancing performance. But, yeah, if we can add something on like electrical stimulation that's going to be legal, I'm all for it. Yeah, especially if your genetics are conducive to it. You know, like that'll get you a, a lot further <clears throat> than, you know. It, it, again, if your genetics are such that those nerves are going to grow in a lot more rapid, they're going to fire a lot more rapid. I mean, yeah, you got to use all the tools. <laughs> and, and the reason you're valuable because you're an analysis, so you're you're, you're a diagnostic. Um, you're diag. What's the word? Diag. I don't know. As far as a doctor that would diagnose or, or analyze, that, that's something that they need to be doing up front. So like it would be very smart for them to get their DNA analyzed by you. And then you would tell them, Hey, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to be, um, it's not going to be as easy for you to make power gains. So you need to be aware of that. You need to make sure you overemphasize that and you need to nutritionally do this. That yep. correct. Isn't that what you would help them understand? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how diverse people are. And that's, what's funny. I think you get these people, and, you know, that are <clears throat> that are almost religious about this is the diet that works. You know, the carnivore yeah. diet is the For only everybody. way to go. For everybody. What's that? For everybody. 
it yeah, works exactly. for everybody. No, that's what I mean. Like they try and apply it out. <laughs> yeah. they, they try and say, well, this works for me, so everybody should mm-hmm. be doing it. And like vegans, you see that a lot with the vegan communities. And, you know, there's certain genetics that are great for, you know, eating a vegan diet. But then some people, it's a terrible diet. It makes them diabetic, I heard. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's certain ways to do a vegan diet that's worse than other ways, too. You know, like all the sugar and the grains. (laughs) But even even if you're doing it correctly and if you're doing the vegan diet correctly, a lot most people aren't going to be super healthy with that diet, frankly. Um. But then there's other people that are, you know, they're going to be exceptionally healthy. And again, it goes back to genetics and customizing that stuff. And you can do that with your power training for sure. I think you, you should, you know, like it's a huge advantage. It's almost like it's almost like a legal performance enhancing, you know, process. No, nutrition is huge. I think you can fail horribly in performance enhancement if you don't know how to eat based on how your body needs to be fed. Right. And, you know, especially it it always comes back to hormones, too. And that's kind of my expertise, because, you know, these hormones like testosterone or estrogen or whatever. I mean, if you've got too much estrogen, it's just as bad as having. Right. Well, let's do this because you're an expert on this. (laughs) Talk about your background in testosterone, because you know what? People love this topic in baseball. So let's let's get into this. Let's talk testosterone. Yeah, I used to research it in the lab. It was funny. I'm writing a book on testosterone kind of just because I'm doing so much research into the subject. I figure I should compile it as a short little book, like a bullet pro, bullet point kind of book and just sell it for a couple bucks and at least, you know, maybe e- ebook only or something. I know. I but, have a um, book. I was going to grab it and show it. Oh, my. What's the name book, of it? Yeah. Yeah. Generation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There it is right here. Hey, rock on. Can you see that? I can see it. Great. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so the, well, the estrogen book. So I wrote, I wrote that to kind of, you know, show people what artificial estrogens are and what and where they are in their environment and their foods and in their water and in their cosmetic products because people are rubbing, they're rubbing estrogen products on their Almost skin. Their they're going through the skin. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny. They most of these baseball players would like to be rubbing uh, testosterone products on the body, but exactly. they're actually doing yeah. the opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And and once you start to Wake up to that, you know. Yeah. It's it's an issue. Well, you well, you like recognize you it about how how bad soy is for testosterone. I think that yes. blew my mind. I think you said what? Tell me if I did this right. But most plants have like a thousand milligrams of estrogen. Less, yeah, less than a less thousand. Than thousand, and then soy is like a hundred thousand. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, good memory. Yeah, yeah. They have less than a a hundred a, th- a thousand micrograms per one hundred grams of the food. Yeah. Yeah, and soy is over 100,000. I mean, it's night and day difference in terms of how much estrogen is in and soy. So the other day when you told me that I'm I'm chewing gum and I looked at the ingredients it said soy <laughs> and I was like, "What? Gosh. <laughs> they get Can't you. get away and, from and, it." <laughs> and once you once you kind of have some awareness of some of these other chemicals like the parabens, like methyl paraben or something, sometimes you get corn tortillas and they've got parabens, you know, estrogenic parabens in your tortillas and you're like, "What the hell? I'm trying to get organic corn here." And, and they use it as or- preservative. And that be an organic corn. Sometimes, yeah. Oh. I mean, I don't I know read my labels. I got to read them more closely. So I'm looking for parabens. If it says yeah. parabens, okay. Yeah, they use them as food preservatives wow. sometimes. I mean, it's more common in fragrances. So what they do is they put them in shampoo, and then they they can legally use this term fragrances, and that kind of encompasses all this quote unquote proprietary secret ingredients that are mostly just cheap high you know petroleum products that are estrogenic that act like estrogen in your body so they're trying to make us asexual i, I just this mo- this move i feel yeah. like they, no, they well, want us all to be asexual well scientists <laughs> call it feminization of males and not a lot of people like to talk about it but i'll talk you about know because it. of the politics yeah I'm, I'm actually writing an article for the weston a price foundation because they're really interested in that topic and i'm I, I want to write the article just right. I want to nail that article because it's so tricky politically to do oh, it. But honestly, God. the research is pretty obvious, you know. Yeah, you got to be careful with don't put any comedy. In. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you that's probably just got to keep. <laughs> that's it, hard for me. <laughs> you got to sterilize the thing and just write it. <laughs> yeah, and that's tricky because, but, yeah. but no, I was talking to a researcher at Mayo Clinic about this she's an estrogen scientist and we were talking about how things like bpa act like estrogen in our body and phthalates Which you know these in things in bpa is in a lot of cheap plastic yeah right. and uh, in fact it's even oftentimes used in housing like the the tubing that will 
connect your water supply to your sink and things like that. So people but think so, they're... But basically, you're get, telling baseball players, be careful drinking bottled water, right? Big time, yeah. Because even if it says BPA-free, what happens a lot of times, the companies, they'll switch to BPS, which is bisphenol S, and that's just as bad. It's just as estrogenic. And there's a sure. whole host of them. There's Man. like BPF, there's BPAF. I mean, there's like this whole list of bisphenols, and they're all just... They act like estrogen in your body, but... They're allowed to call them BPA free. So basically, because some no more are... bottled water for baseball players. Well, no, yeah, you should use glass or stainless. You know, yeah. stainless steel. It's crazy yeah. to me that they're drinking out of these big Gatorade things and they're plastic and and yeah. it's every day. You know. Yeah. So I did it. When they do urinary testing, when we when the scientists are doing are testing urine, I mean, it's amazing how much phthalates and BPA is in the urine. And, yeah. it, and what else is cool is using a sauna sweats that out. So you can sweat. You can put a skin patch. Like a like a almost like a nicotine patch, except without the nicotine, and and sit in a sauna, and then you test people's, you know, BPA it's levels and all this long. just from the sweat coming out, and it's really cool how so, you sweat. So hey, so you just gave me a great idea. So all those baseball players, that's why you should come down here and train at Top Velocity in Louisiana uh, because <laughs> in we sweat our asses off. That yeah. means you're gaining testosterone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by by dropping your estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly, it does. Like these t these chemicals that I write about, they they drop your free testosterone and your total testosterone both, and they block the 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 testosterone receptor from binding. So even if the testosterone is high, it's not even able to bind to the receptor. So it's not even able to really do anything. All right. So, so it's a problem. No I'm bottled water, and we need hot temperatures. Train and sweat, guys. These are good things for testosterone. We want to avoid soy. We want to avoid parabens. We want to avoid... Filter your water. Yep. Filter your water. What else yep. can we do? Oh, there's a lot of things. Like, you know, when I, when I was putting in carpet, I was careful not to buy polyethylene carpet, which is a common kind of carpet. You can get nylon. Which you is know, probably you can get in every wool. dorm room in college. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> is yeah, it in the good sheets? Thing is, yeah, sometimes polyester. You know, like you know, polyester. Polyester. Polyester has what? phthalates. That's and Under it Armour. Up your... Really? Under well, Armour's how much, products how much are all like polyester, man. How much? How much percentage is it? Well, they've gotten less when they first came out. I mean, that's what made them Under Armour. It was this performance oh, yeah. fit. You know, it's what. Yeah, it's got but, that I mean, stretch it, to it. Yeah, it's the stretch to it. So polyester. I mean, wow. Polyester brings your blood levels of phthalates up, and and um. They've even done studies with, with laundry detergents that have a lot of phthalates. And they show that just sit, having clothing from that's really strong smelling, you know, with the laundry detergent perfumes, that can, you know, they, because phthalates are also used. And by the way, phthalates are spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, but it's pronounced phthalate, like just T-H, okay. P-H is silent. But anyways, um, they've shown that, that, you know, a lot of times with the fragrances, the reason companies add phthalates, number one, they're super cheap. So it's a filler, but number two, because it's a plastic ingredient, but then number two, it carries the fragrance farther across the room because, you know, it's like estrogen or something, you know, like I think people are attracted, like men, especially we're attracted to that estrogen smell, yeah, even right, though we don't females. really know that that's what we're attracted <laughs> to, but we're, we're basically ripping it off with these artificial chemicals. So we like the smell, but it's bad for us. So it's a lose lose in terms of these chemicals. Wow. So we got to watch our laundry detergent. So I get like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Mel Luca. I use Mel Luca products. So I hope yep. they don't have it in there. But I usually un usually get an unscented detergent yep. from them. Yep. Me um, too. It's, yeah. And then when you smell the ones that have, scent, like sometimes you go to a hotel yeah, you and throw up. Laundry, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. How, how do people. Well, it's you know, also, it's a big irritant since I'm fair skinned. It's a big irritant on my skin, those, those detergents. So I, I, know, I can tell. I, I think. That's a benefit for your health because, you know, then you, you don't have as much of an option. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're right. <laughs> exactly. And it's like the Red 40. You know, I, it's amazing how many people, because these chemicals are changing our epigenetics. Again, those are marks on top of the DNA and that's inherited. So you can, you can actually make future generations less healthy by being exposed to these chemicals yourself. What? And that, I mean, that's what wow. my book is really. Yeah, that's the culmination of my book wow. because, you know, like infertility, like, for example, if you expose mice or rats to BPA, just the mother, you literally see health effects three and four generations out wow, just from the one mother being exposed. It can, but can that be positive too? Is there a positive aspect to that? 
Many, yeah, many for things. sure. Not with BPA, but like, for example, broccoli sprouts. One of the reasons broccoli sprouts are so healthy is they have a chemical called sulforaphane. And sulforaphane actually changes your epigenetics, like your marks on your DNA, in a positive way. And so you actually... You a lot of broccoli, people. Well, broccoli <laughs> sprouts, yeah, especially sprouts. have a lot. Yeah. Wow. I actually sprout my own. I bought one of those little sprouters. And wow. I, well, so what's the difference between... I mean, you're just talking about the tips of the broccoli is what you're talking about? No, like you buy the seeds and you put them in like a, a oh, glass so you jar. you can actually buy the produce? The produce? Well, yeah, I mean, broccoli by itself has some cell therapy, but, but the seeds... not as much as the sprout. Okay, but, you get the seed and you let it sprout and you eat it right there. Yeah, yeah, and it tastes okay. I mean, my kids Whatever. eat it too. And, it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, and like the B vitamins are another big one, you know, like most of the B vitamins positively impact your marks wow. on your DNA, your epigenetics. So getting that like synthetically awesome. is there is there a better way to get bees oh for sure well that's one of the reasons meat is so healthy because meat has a lot of b vitamins and honestly you really have to look at your dna because different people almost almost everybody that i do uh you know consulting for genetic consulting they always have some issue with some b vitamin it okay. seems like i mean that's not a guarantee but so you want to optimize the ones that your enzymes aren't you know and the ones that you're not utilizing that well in your body in your own body and yeah good example if we're going into vitamins with your dna you told me that i had that was the only two plus pluses i had which is not good well it means it, it, it's a plus plus for a marker that is was a negative because it basically said i didn't have my receptors my vitamin d receptors. vitamin d yep yeah, i remember and that so one. i wasn't avoid, avoiding vitamin or absorbing vitamin d which right well, probably most of the population isn't but um, I don't know. It, it, it's something that I, I, once you said that, I started consuming a lot more of it up to what you recommended. So here's the thing. like When, when I did my blood panels on D a while back, they said my D level was fine. So talk about the difference between when, when people are, go out and get a blood panel as opposed to the, their DNA. Yeah, so the blood. So like say, say you take vitamin D, right? It goes into your bloodstream. And the problem with D especially is that the, the recommended ranges are way off because everybody's sitting inside. So they're ba the recommended, you know, a, a daily allowance or whatever, they call it the RDA. Um, the, you know, when it says 100% of your daily value, that's way off. That's way lower than it should be because it's based on average Americans and average Americans are crazy unhealthy. And that's true of a lot of these recommended daily allowances, especially if you're a smaller, if you're a bigger athlete, you know? Yeah, it's um, almost like if you don't get the RDA, you're, there's a really good chance yeah, you're yeah. going to be sick. <laughs> you're dysfunctional, right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, these athletes, you guys are, and you, you yourself, you guys are working out, you're sweating out a lot of this stuff, you know, like you need higher levels of magnesium and things because, yeah, you're, you're losing more too, not yeah. just Depleting. needing more. Yeah. But um, anyways, <laughs> so. So, but so talk about it, the difference between the blood panels to the DNA, just so they yeah, know, exactly. a lot of them are probably yeah. going, well, I already know my, you know, my, problems because i did a blood panel but that's not really true because blood panels yep. can be very misleading exactly so that's where i was trying to go with that so yeah. <laughs> in a circuitous way yeah right. no, so like say you get your blood tested and the level is maybe you know excellent whatever it's on the high end of normal for d well for for one that's still kind of on the low end if you compare that to native tribes <laughs> yeah. but again that's that's off topic a little bit <laughs> but because like for example the high end of normal in America is about 60 nanograms per liter but they've studied native tribes that are out running around with a thong all day long literally and those guys are like around 100 they're around 90 wow. And the pregnant women are up to about one. But they don't look like us. They don't look like the gingers we yeah, are. Do yeah, they? yeah. So I'm sure but, we're but, yeah. we're like from <laughs> Mars or something. Huh? <laughs> but but with the D the importance of the DNA, right? Is that like for in your case and in because you've publicly done your DNA with me, I don't feel like we have to yeah, worry about no, confidentiality okay, or something because I normally am pretty confidential. I'm transparent. Let's do it. it yeah. <laughs> so like for example, with your genetic mutation, your vitamin D receptor doesn't function optimally. And so when you, even if you have 60 nanograms per liter of vitamin D, which again is the absolute high end of the normal range in America, you're, you're probably going to be pretty average or maybe suboptimal because that receptor is not picking up that vitamin D. So yeah, your blood says it's really high, but you're not picking it up and using it. And isn't your blood more of a snapshot of where you are at that moment? That day, yeah. Yeah, Especially that's why I don't even know why they charge so much for blood panels. I mean, it's like, come on, that, that, that's just a moment in time. 
You know, that's yeah, why that's, the, that's, that's why doing yeah. the DNA thing with you is so valuable because that's capturing who you are. Right. That's it's a good, good point. point. Yeah, I pre- I like that. That's yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good, good sales good. pitch right there for me. <laughs> well, it's like you know, I have a friend of mine who um, actually I want to get him to talk to you. His dad was. Um, I mean, I don't know. He might not like this, but his dad was a famous basketball player. Um, I'll go as far as that. And Mm -hmm. he, uh, his dad died young with some heart defect, but so he's very concerned about that. Mm -hmm. So he's always, you know, and his health's been up and down lately. He's close to my age and we're always talking blood panels and, and he's, he's so confused by all his blood panels. And I'm like, you know what? You really need to do this DNA because your dad had a genetic heart issue. I think he didn't, his uh, left coronary arteries never grew. He only was born with his right coronary arteries. You probably yeah. already know who I'm talking about. But at that point, I, yeah. I told him, I said, uh, getting your DNA would be a lot more valuable to you because you're probably going to see, you know, some of the things your dad have if they're still in you. And exactly. it might clear up a lot of the things that are bothering you right now. Yeah, and, and cholesterol is always overemphasized by these doctors, you know, and they're always trying to prescribe statins because that's what they're trained to do. You know, they look at those blood panels and then they say, oh, you need to get on statins. But they don't and, know how your body works with cholesterol and they're exactly. prescribing you statins. Yeah. Exactly. And most people don't really, they don't have problems genetically with cholesterol, honestly. And you want high cholesterol to some degree because you want to make those hormones that are so important for athletic optimization. So especially for athletes in mean, the cholesterol topic, you know, it's it's kind of ridiculous in the conventional medical system, the way they the way they look at that and the way they handle it. And that's a perfect example of how you need to optimize your own, you know, diet in the form of cholesterol. And that can have huge ramifications on your performance and your sleep and all these other things because all these hormones, these sex hormones are being made from cholesterol. And yeah, I mean, it's frustrating for me, you know, like you see this stuff and the conventional system is so centered around disease and and waiting until people are sick, you know, and, and then trying to it's give them trauma. drugs. I always say to me that conventional <laughs> medical or traditional medicine is really trauma. It's like, hey, if, if you're if you're in a an emergency, that's the place to go. But don't use it for preventative care. It's like the yep. worst place yep. you could actually go for preventative care. I like, know. And they're, all you they're have almost... to do is walk into a hospital and go to the cafeteria and you can see how bad they are at preventative yeah, care. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's so true. I mean, I see people, you know, I don't want to point out the Mayo Clinic specifically because it's right. true of every place you go, right? It you, is. They're drinking sodas. and You go in there and you're like, is this really a cafeteria? If this was a business, like if people yeah. came here just for the food, it would have shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get that pudding that's like <laughs> congealed. They're like, yeah, that's going to keep me alive. <laughs> well, and what I was going to say about cholesterol too is it changes when you wake up in the morning. It's different than when you go to sleep at night, you know? And, and, and if you eat, I don't know, a macaroni and cheese salad or whatever, whatever a macaroni and cheese for lunch, it's going to be different, in, you know, the next yeah. day or a couple of days later. And but, I mean, but there's but like a three again, day. The, the DNA is telling you how your body works yep. with what you're putting in it. So it's telling exactly. you, okay, if you're putting them, then if this is your diet, if this is your behavior, this is how your DNA is working with that. Is it positively Correct. improving with that or is it negatively improving, improving with that? So you've exactly. got people out there and I saw it. I, I remember a guy, my good friend's dad used to run a, by my house every day jogging. Like he, this dude ran every day, and he and he had a heart attack at like fifty. Yep. And I, he probably thought he had the healthiest life in the world. But he probably yeah. didn't know his body was probably mm-hmm. over the inflammation from all that running every day was was killing him. Yeah, exactly. You know? I know, and who knows what his diet was like too? That that he was probably told was really healthy, and I mean, he was yeah. probably just suffering. You know, I mean, that's what that's the worst, right? Is when you're. When you're eating the recommended diet, you're going out of your way to supposedly eat healthy, and then at the end of the day, it's not even healthy. I mean, it's such well, a... Yeah, and it's, it's, we still it's don't so know sad. everything. I mean, if you go back to yeah. when they replaced butter with margarine, that was the dumbest thing they ever did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's a good point. You know, like, butter is a good example, just bringing back to my, connecting back to the estrogen issue. Yeah. Um, you know, we're feeding these cows corn that's been sprayed with atrazine, which is a herbicide. And by the way, atrazine... If you Google like feminization and atrazine, you'll find all kinds of scientific studies, you know, like it literally changes your sex hormones. So basically you a, don't need to have a sex chain 
you just yeah. <laughs> spray this pesticide yeah. on your body. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, right, like frogs have um, sexual changes, you know, like from male to female at about 200 nanograms per liter of atrazine. And in our, uh, the legal allowable limit for your drinking water is 3,000 nanograms per liter of atrazine. So if you live in farm country, I mean, it's you've got to filter your water, like we said at the beginning, you know. Yeah, having this debate on uh, in, on Capitol Hill would probably be pretty bad. Like, you need to be yeah. careful with that article. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the problem, too, is, that, you know, you bring up Capitol Hill and then you start realizing there's all this money behind the scenes that's mm-hmm. influencing them. And then they're trying to and- they're trying to make fun of scientists like me that are trying to just tell people, honestly, here's what's Inform. happening. Hey, I know exactly you were going to. They do that to me in baseball. I just try to inform people, and they all yeah. try to cut my legs off and make fun of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know what? Like, you just got to keep doing what you do, you know. And but because, yeah, because you I know mean, what? Because as as much as we're you know, like they say, the first guys through are the most bloodied and beat, and that's just the way it is. We're just getting slapped. It's like, you know, it's like when I tell my kids that. That, you know what they did was wrong and then they complain and moan and and they yell at me and they hate me well obviously i i, I did what was best for them and they treated me like crap but then i noticed two or three days later they they took my advice and i just think yeah. that's how it works in society or 10, 10 years later <laughs> yeah 10 years later so the point is yeah i mean we're not gonna you know we're not, we're not gonna feel the rewards from it but we'll notice and i've already noticed in, in my 11 years of doing this that the, it's changing it's working you know yep yep yeah and that's I mean, that's part of the difference between being on the cutting edge. And, you know, a lot of our medical system, it's really not on the cutting edge because these doctors go to med school and they're trained on how to diagnose something and then what drug to give people. And, I mean, honestly, that's not the cutting edge. The cutting edge is looking at your DNA, looking at your epigenetics, trying to optimize, prevent these crazy things from happening. And eventually our system is going to have to catch up to that because it's costing us a fortune to you know, to do all these, to, people are just getting so unhealthy and taking so many drugs. I mean, I think the average is like 10, 11 prescription drugs per, I think it's per person or something. I mean, it's some crazy number. No, it's insane. And the, and the opiate addiction is unbelievable. Um, yeah. There's a huge industry for, I was reading about in Mexico for that plant. I forgot what it's, it's called, Ibiograin or something like that. It's some Oh, I began. Yeah, yeah, yep. that plant that helps them detox these opiates, and it's—I yep. mean, it can be life-threatening. But I mean, and they can't practice here. But there's like they have a line of people because of yep. the problem that we have to try to detox from the from the opiates. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, it, it's insane, <laughs> and it just because it shows that the that's that's um that's the the traditional medical industry going the wrong way. <laughs> Well, and I think honestly, I have this theory about about epigenetic changes. So again, epigenetics marks on top of your DNA. You can pass it to future generations. It can change your health for years. So sometimes these people, you know, they don't realize. So that, you're that making a good point. You need to not only take care of yourself for yourself, but you're saying for your future generations. That's perf- that's unbelievable, man. That's mind blowing. What yeah. you're what you're I saying. Know. Yeah, the guy that discovered that. In like 2004, you know, the scientists knew about it for since we've known about it for quite a while, but the general public hasn't heard about it until recently because people like me are out there just talking about it constantly because it's crazy fascinating. And and now the science is becoming more and more established on epigenetics. But that paper that the guy published, his name is Michael Skinner. It was the most cited scientific research paper for like four or five years within all the scientific journals. I mean, insane amounts of, you know visibility so, hey, so baseball players not only if you want to increase your testosterone but you're also focused on increasing the testosterone of your child your kids i know <laughs> but uh what i was going to say about the opioid stuff is i literally now i don't have a lot of scientific re- you know like evidence for this because there hasn't been studies but i think it's going to come out in the future that you know back in like the 90s doctors were prescribing opioids for everybody you know like you came in with like a sore finger or something and they'd be like well here let me write you and they were giving it to everybody and that literally changes your epigenetics again in my opinion i don't see the research because nobody studied this but yeah. i bet you that makes you more susceptible to opioid addiction in the future oh wow 
just like you know so these other chemicals yeah. cause that same problem so the 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 backlash to this is next generation they're going to start banning yep. opioids well from... and that's yeah exactly and i even think the children of those parents that were being prescribed opioids are probably more so yeah. let, let me give you another epigenetic example that i think is crazy right so if you are a smoker well if your grandmother smoked okay and then your mother did not smoke she still has so she has an increased risk for asthma, like 1.5 fold wow. increased risk for asthma. And she didn't even smoke, the mother. Now if, you're, now, if you're the daughter of that mother, you have a 1.8 fold increased risk for asthma. So it actually got worse, right? Wow. So if your grandmother smoked, she didn't increase, she maybe increased her risk for asthma, but not really because, wow. you know, asthma comes on at the young ages. But it got worse in the mother and then even worse in the granddaughter. You see what I'm saying? So the it, best it thing you could do is that one of them could have married someone who had a marker that made them, you know, m maybe had a stronger cardiovascular system or something. That'd be probably the only way to wipe it out, right? If not, it just kept get, get, keeps getting worse. Yeah, well, it, I, I think it plateaus at some point, and, okay. and obviously it depends on what positive influences. I mean, yeah, you don't, hopefully you don't have to marry somebody with, like, really strong lungs or something, but... Because I mean, how well, there's recessive that, genes right? too, right? Isn't there recessive genes? Maybe someone you married yeah. had a gene. Maybe they had oh, asthma sure. too, but for they sure. had a, a gene that helped kind of comp or um, you know reverse that or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's and, that's and, the and fascinating thing about genes is like it's 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 not probably just so binary, right? There, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure oh, it's and, binary, and, but there's probably just many levels of of the the binary aspects of it, huh? Yeah, and I mean, obviously. You wouldn't want to use 23andMe as like a genetic, like a dating <laughs> website. <laughs> well, I heard that. I heard, I heard they're going to start using DNA for dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, heard that. Seriously. <laughs> oh, man. I was, I just think it's a joke. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and that's definitely truth, right? Like if you're a carrier for hemochromatosis, which a lot of people are, which means you have high levels of iron in your blood, like really high, where at the point where it's oxidizing your arteries and things, causing effectively damaging your arteries, like rust or something. Um, a lot of people are carriers, and you know, if you have two people that are carriers, your offspring, you know, have probably a one in four chance of getting that that uh, that hemochromatosis. Is that problem. where a lot of like um, genetic diseases come from at a very young age? Is it just because they happen to? be and that their dna just had two really strong markers and yep, they just yep. you know wrong place wrong time kind of thing yeah 100 percent. and it's it's kind of complicated again because of the epigenetics because of these marks on top of the dna can change i mean so the the difference so i'm i'm trying to write a book on dna and another book on epigenetics and then release them all at the same time so the DNA book is going to be called DNA with Dr. J, by the way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm going to cool. use the DRJ instead of Do Dr. J, just like the letters DRJ hashtag. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to release them at the same time because, you know, your DNA, if you have a defective enzyme, right, like we talked about with your DNA, and we, I mean, everybody has them, right? It doesn't mean you can't function. It just means you have to figure those out and optimize. But if you've got a defective enzyme, based on your DNA, that's always going to be a defective enzyme. You can't really change that. I mean, maybe you can use viruses in the future or something, but I mean, honestly, right now you just have a defective enzyme. You have to work around that and figure out ways to take more vitamin D, right? In a way, vitamin. that's why we've never really cured anyone yep. except a lot of the things. example yep. you used of the immune deficient kids. Yep. That's yep. probably a few cases where we've actually cured someone. <laughs> I know. And the media has been so like the public has been so afraid to even do that again because of that cancer situation, unfortunately, because now we know how to do it Were, properly. Was it aggressive cancers? Yeah, it's crazy aggressive. Yeah. So because these viral live, genes huh? are just these virus, these genes inside the virus are just the worst type of cancer, you know. Wow. But again, they strip those out now and now it's perfectly effective. But the point, you know. What was I saying before that? No, I'm um, sorry, I distracted you. We were talking about um, oh, uh, epigenetics. I was yeah. going to say yeah. so. There, you know, like, if your DNA is messed up, you're always going to have that enzyme is always going to be messed up. But if your epigenetics is messed up, you can change that based on your diet. Unfortunately, we don't have a way of sequencing epigenetics cheaply right now. I I, con I contacted a company in California. Um, about sequencing my epigenetics because they can do it. It's it's technically feasible. The technology is here. It was twenty grand to have my epigenetics done. 
Because you're the and first one to probably ask. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you can get government grants to subsidize that sort of thing, as a, at least for me, for as a scientist. But, I mean, still. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Well, man, but that's going to go down, you know? You're really on the cutting edge of all this. So let's kind of we'll, – we'll sum it up, man. This has been awesome. I think this is chock full of just great information. Just so many possibilities of, of what you're doing and, and all this, which is really cool. Um, talk about how they can get in touch with you to do the DNA consult or analysis. How yeah, can people, they get in touch with you? It, yeah, I usually send people to my website, which is ajconsultingcompany.com. I wish it had a sexier name, but that's just what I've had <laughs> since like <laughs> way back. But ajconsultingcompany.com, and then they just email me and say, hey, I'm interested in doing DNA. You're also and on it, Twitter, too. So. Yeah, I'm on Twitter and, I mean, even Instagram. I mean, I'm out there. It's just – Twitter's probably a great place to find me, honestly. Like, you know, But, um, yeah, the, the thing is you have to have your 23andMe done, you know. And you want to get the cheaper version. They have two versions, like you like said, said before. The, the Ancestry is $69 right now. So they, so they could go yeah. get the $69, get that set. And it takes time. Shoot, that thing took like two months for me. That was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah that's unusual. I know. Yeah. So I think they're just getting a lot of people. So the thing is, do that. If you're thinking about this, just go and do that. If you know, if anything, you're going to get your Ancestry uh, lineage. But then you're going to take that raw data file, and right? And, and just email it to me. Yep. And I'll, I'll instruct on how to do that. If people email me and say they're interested, then I'll, I'll send back an email and say, hey, that's cool. Here's what you do next, you know. And, and, it, and it's only going to be more powerful in the future, right? Because you've done your DNA and that information, you know, as we keep doing more research and finding more things, that information that you have is going to become more valuable. You, you'll be able to go back to it in a couple right, of years and gain more I can basically go back knowledge. to you in five years and be like, hey, can you look at my DNA and see if there's anything new yeah. that you've learned? Exactly. Yeah. But here's the thing. They do that. They know how to eat better. They can come to me and be like, um, we're, you know, we, we do a nutritional program. And here you talk to Steve uh, about what you learned. You could then come to me and say, hey, you know, Dr. J saying that my, you know, I'm more slow twitch or what, what we can do. And then I would actually bring in some more loading. Um, you know, there's things that I could do in customizing your programming. So exactly. we, there's a lot we can do with it. And I think like you said, it's something that is just it's priceless because it's telling you who you are. And it's not just a moment in time. I mean, the only moment in time is the information um, is what we know now. And, you know, in 10 years, we're going to know more. But still, it's giving you something that you probably won't forget for the rest of your life because you know that's who you are, that that's what you're made of. I know. And it's way ahead, it's way ahead of the modern medical system because eventually they're going to start utilizing DNA, but it's probably 10 years out, you know, and then they're going to say – this chemotherapy drug is ideal for you because of your DNA or whatever. And, but that's so far out, unfortunately, that, yeah, you know, you know that, the medical industry, anyone trying to hit the masses and make money doesn't really like customization because it involves yep. a lot of personal time. I mean, think of what their customer service is going to go to, you know, I know. Well, and it's a one-time thing too. It's this, it, because you go in, you, you get optimized, you know, you know what to eat, you know how to work out, you know how to train. So and then you can they, go and do it on your own. You and, and tell them too, it's not something where they could you could walk into a store and you go get cold medicine and it's going to be like, oh, I got to find my DNA number for my cold medicine. <laughs> it's really not going to be like that because every DNA is unique, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so including it might, it might tell you, okay, if you know these markers, you probably need to get this cold medicine. But Jesus, could you imagine how chaotic that's going to be when you go to the <laughs> CVS? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and the stem cells are going to be cool too. Like people should watch out for that because. Using your own stem cells is going to be interesting. There's going to be ways that researchers like me are manipulating the cells to make them optimal, and manipulating the DNA within those cells, everything, and then re-injecting those to make is there any, you know, your joints stronger. Is there any negatives to that? Is there anything, you know, similar? not 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 really? I mean, the FDA put out a statement that basically said, you know, we don't approve of this. I mean, they didn't really say it like this, but they basically said. Yeah, we're not like super on board, but you're at least not harming yourself. <laughs> and and that's a good thing. I mean, the fact that the FDA is saying that, that that's that's a good start. Unless for you're injecting, you know, I, well, stem cells and, and then the virus to change your DNA, then it gets a little bit more risky, right? That's dicey, yeah. <laughs> yeah which is, is becoming popular. If you're doing it in your garage with myostatin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That would scare you. Wait, how long? But there's so you would, you could literally 
change your DNA to inhibit that myostatin and then just mutate yep. yourself? Yep, hundred percent. What? That that's totally going to be illegal. People fast. people are going to do it. I mean, it's going to be illegal, but you won't be able to detect it. So wow, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But you know, <laughs> I mean, right now they're developing myostatin inhibitor drugs so that you can just take a drug to inhibit myostatin, but that's detectable, you know? Right, so the ones actually change their DNA to do it. You're right, that's... that's I, probably shouldn't even, I probably shouldn't even say this, because you know, talk about myostatin gene doping, because honestly, now somebody's going to go out and do it. Some you know, guy's going to be out in his garage yeah. <laughs> buying myostatin and viruses and, and injecting them. Yeah, if you're injecting viruses in your body, you have to be careful because of cancer, right? Wouldn't, yeah. Is that probably yeah. the biggest concern of injecting viruses in your body? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, which is, you know, something. I mean, unless unless around. you know how to cut those cancer genes out, which people like me do, you know, if you don't know how to do that, you don't want to just buy a lentivirus online and that that inhibits myostatin genes, you know. You know what's been really popular as a performance enhancer? It's a, it's illegal. Is peptides? They, you know, these designed, yeah, peptic bonds that can yeah. stimulate, you know, hormones. You, I mean, that's your business. For sure. So yep. you think that's going to continue to evolve or is something like, you know, this yeah. gene therapy or, or whatever is going to just override that? Is it, do you think this is something that we need to, you might start hearing, continue to hearing more a lot of? Oh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, it's 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 still like, you know, anytime you have these supplements, it's more transient. It's short term and you got to keep taking them and then they're detectable right. and things. Whereas when you're changing, I think the ultimate is going to be epigenetics. You know, you really want. I really want people to know that term because five years, you know, everybody's heard of DNA. Everybody's heard of genetics. Five years from now, everybody's going to have heard of epigenetics. Well, make it a little bit more clear. So with epigenetics, it <clears throat> sounds like it's something that just is, it's like, it's like a, well, a, 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 um, a record of what I've, my behaviors that it's going to be passed on. But it, is there yeah. something that, let me give you an analogy. Go ahead. Like if you're a musician or even if you've seen a piano, it's like a sheet of music with notes on it. Um, you know, like you can play Mary had a little lamb, right? Like look at the notes and it's like, da, 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 just one note at a time. It's on a staff, you know, there's black dots. Now that's like your DNA, right? You can pass that to somebody else and they'll be able to play that exact same song. No problem. Da, 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 da. doesn't really change much between next generation. I mean, it's DNA is more complicated because you get two parents and it mixes, but essentially that's the same thing. Mary had a little, now epigenetics that's like chords. Like if you put chords on top of those notes, so there's more notes than just da, 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 da. that's the epigenetics. So you can change that. You can change it by changing your diet, changing your exercise, changing your sleep. Those are the three pillars of health. And then you can pass those changes on to somebody else and they can play that more complex song with those chords. Does that make sense? That's probably so the simplest okay, way. Okay, so it's like it's so if if you know I I go through the next 2 years I just eat it Mc Oh, I don't want to throw out McDonald's, but I eat, I eat horrible. You just did, Brent. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I eat hor oh, they, whatever. I eat horrible. I don't work out. I uh, I uh, I stay up all night. My sleep patterns are off. So yep. my epigenetics are changing, right? Oh, and for then, sure. And then say I stop that behavior and I start eating right and all this. Well, immediately my epi genetics don't change. I don't all of a sudden become a healthy person again. I have exactly. to go through another year or two. Of yep. recovering and 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 getting and and making my body healthier and exactly. leaner and and more vital, yep. right? So the epigenetics is really showing, hey, these cells. The reason in the past two years you you look worse is because your epigenetics have changed your cells because all this crappy behavior. And now to get it back, you're gonna yep. have to do change it's a long your behavior. Journey. To, yeah, it's a journey. So that basically yep. is just defining the journey. And it, it yep. makes a great point. People that come in and they immediately want a result, your epigenetics yep. is not going to allow that because it's saying Sometimes. that you're, yep. the, your epigenetics is saying, no, you, you're all these bad things right now. You're going to have and, to start yeah. implanting new ones to get to a, where you want to be. And your stem cells are the most sensitive to epigenetic changes. So especially within your gut, like your intestines and things, you can change your intestinal stem cells and literally have like food sensitivities that you develop and things like this later in your life from dysfunctional eating. It's a great, you know, and one of the ways to determine, like I, I interviewed a guy named Stephen Lynn and he wrote a book called The Dental Diet, which is really interesting. And uh, he, he has this interesting thermometer for testing your epigenetics, like basically for free without going to a doctor and saying, paying $20,000 <laughs> yeah, and right. getting, right? But basically look at your jaws and how def 
you know, like in your wisdom teeth, because if your if your mother was eating healthy and your grandmother was eating healthy, and he especially sees this with people that were raised on farms eating whole foods and healthy foods that aren't sprayed with chemicals, they don't they have plenty of space for their wisdom teeth. Their jaws are more like square shape as opposed to like these chins that are like, like apparently as a generation now, our chin is receding, like it's getting shorter and smaller and our, our teeth have less and less space. So as a dentist, they're not only having to take their wisdom teeth out of the, these kids, but even other teeth because there's so little space. And that's epigenetics. People are screwing themselves up and they're screwing up the next generation. And that's so one of the ways to tell, you know. Yeah. So basically whoever created us is basically said, hey, you know, I gave you a perfect thing to work with but you can screw it up yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's sad i think we're all going to be dwarfs and we're going to be hairy and ugly in about 100 years <laughs> and well there's going to be a certain number of people for sure i mean obesity is at like over one third of the united states but then there's a there's that other side of the population that are really you know vigilant and 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 really making positive health changes because the science is there to do it. It just takes discipline. That's the hard part. Well, I think we're about to go through that wave. I think we're coming more into awareness, and now we're becoming aware of how all this works. And um, obviously, collectively, we like to be around healthy people because it makes life a lot happier than if you're the only healthy person. So I think we, we're all doing like like you and I are doing, putting this information out, trying to create awareness of what's going on and hopefully we tr we change through generations um and to, to to become healthier people and i think it's going to happen i think when you have self-awareness and, and and all this is getting out i think human nature you're, you're going to want to take advantage of it you know i think unfortunately ignorance is probably what got us here right yeah yeah and money <laughs> <laughs> yeah money is taking company, advantage of the drug ignorance. companies yeah. educating educating doctors yeah, i can't watch another pharmaceutical commercial online i'm on the tv <laughs> i literally can't watch it i'm just like oh my god stop. it should be illegal i think they need to make those they need Dude, to outlaw those it's for real. like it literally is like being in a horror movie when i watch them just when you know how it all works, you're just like they're smiling oh, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like all the gut ones. I'm just like, oh my god! If I just feel so bad for the people that are buying this gut medicine, I'm just like they're literally making it worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's who sad, knows what man. But hopefully, through yeah. self awareness, that all changes. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. All right, man. Well, this was this was really awesome, dude. We went 115 or an hour and 15 minutes, so that, I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> uh, we, we might re revisit this again. Keep keep me up yeah. to date on your work, man. I love what you're doing. Oh. Um, those out there should get his book, Extra Generation. Um, and anything else, they should go out and also use you as consultation for your DNA. Um, anything else you want to tell them about? No, oh, that's perfect. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, man. I'm excited. All right, Dr. J. Appreciate it, man. This is awesome. <laughs> Take care. All right, that was a, an amazing episode with Dr. J. One of those episodes where you got to listen to it several times to get all the information out of it. I can't actually, or I can't wait to actually listen to it again. So, yeah, we ran pretty long, so I would just say reach out to him. More than likely, he's going to be someone who's going to be very hard to get in touch with just because he's doing all this cutting-edge stuff. So I would do it now. He's got good prices um, if you want to use them for your analysis on your DNA. And uh, it doesn't get any better than that, guys. Just trying to give you... Uh, some cutting edge, cutting edge stuff to help you reach your goals and dreams in this game or in life. And uh, hey, we can't wait for the next one. We got another awesome podcast coming up. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the flip side.